plastic and get the the wax off of it. Oh, I got to put the the laminates in the laminated core, and this is leftover stock. I cut a whole bunch of because I knew that I was going to make all three sixteenths cores. So I actually have another big long piece. I have some quarter inch stuff, but I don't think I'll ever make another quarter inch. I mean. Why I don't want to make a bigger one. I want to make a smaller one and the smaller ones are working pretty good. So There's no no need for me to make a, I'm gonna file that so it's straight. It's kind of at an angle here See if I can get this a little straighter I go over the grinder, but it's so easy to bend these. If I go to the grinder, it'll... I'm getting close. I say that's, I say that's close enough. Close enough. Now, will this stack fit in there? It should. Come on, I don't want to remove one. That's. Oh, just a little too tight, and I'm afraid that if I take one off, it'll be a little too loose. I like them to fit real nice and tight in there. Let's see if I can. I'm trying to file a little bit of a lead. What happens is when you <clears throat> wind the wire around, it, it squeezes that down and gets tight. Because I know if I push a brooch rod through, then it'd be fine. But I don't really want to do that and mess around. Where is the brooch rod? Somebody was asking how I made these made these brooch rods. Well, and wanted to, wanted me to make basically make another one. Um, I would, but you know this one's working so well. Well, I can kind of explain what I did. When I went over the lathe, took a piece of stock, and I turned the taper on it. You know, just basically turn, set the compound up and turned the taper on it. I can't remember, it was only a couple degrees, I believe. Maybe five degrees. And once I'd done that, I took a tool bit. Let's see if I can draw a picture, maybe. I took a tool bit and get me a pencil. So basically what I have is a round piece and I have I turned the taper on it. So it's small on one end and then it gets bigger. And it plot naturally you have the extra material out here because I went to a taper and then and then straight you know and then it, it's 
straight. I just turned the taper on the end, on the end of the, on the end of it. I went, I turned, I turned this diameter, this diameter, and then I turned this diameter up to where I wanted to taper to, to end. And I set it up, and then I cut this taper. So I cut a taper on there. Then I came in with a tool bit that looked like when say we're looking at the taper this way, like that. Got tailstock live center in here, and I come in with a tool bit that has an angle on it like that. So I. I come in and I turn so that it's like like that and I come to the next and I move over and uh, oh wait a minute I got my tool bit wrong ah, when you try to explain something it's, so you got your you have your tapered pin and your tool bit looks like yeah I had the tool bit right it looks the tool bit looks like this you know with a with a taper on it with an angle on it and you plunge in until you have very little land or, or none and then you come over to the next spot and you move over and you plunge in again until you got very little land or none and you just keep doing that all the way down so you have so you end up with teeth and on the taper you're gonna you're gonna have to go in you don't, you'll have to go in less and less and less I know if, if this one goes bad, I'll make a video of the next one that I make. But as f for now, this one works really good and I'm not going to I'm not going to make another one. <laughs> Cuz it is a lot of dinking around. But once you get one, and then I and then plus I made this out of uh it's a heat treated tool uh, heat treated stainless is what it is. It's not real hard, but yeah, it, because when you get down to, when you first start out, you're going in, you know, fairly deep, almost cl cleaning up all the way around. And then you just go in less and less and less. And you can put on as many teeth as you want on it. I had, I had put, uh, stopped right about here and then I decided I want more teeth so I put more teeth out here at the finish cut size and I might put a I might put a couple more rows of teeth on this finished uh, finish diameter here just so I don't have to go push it through more than once because if you did that then I w if I did that I wouldn't have to push it through so many times I push it through like three four times lead-in seemed to help. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. We're about 200 thou down from being all the way through. Let's see if I can stand up here and We are about a couple hundred thousand now. <sighs> yep, I think I'm gonna take these, I don't know. I'll lay something across here and here and push against it in the vise. I just don't wanna mess up that wire. Um, Wish I could get it by hand. Oh, we did. We did. Just takes a little persistence, I guess. They're a little crooked. 
Uh, I don't know if I can straighten that out or not. I suppose I could cut that weld off back here and then push them so they're straight. I think that's what I'll do. Well, I'll end up cutting that off anyway. Because I don't want them higher than the, than the pegs. I don't know if it would matter. But the way I cut them uh, on the other one was just I took a Dremel tool with a little part off blade and buzz through them so that's what I'm gonna sit and do again and I'm gonna shut the camera off here and cut these off what I'll do is I'll cut these off and then I'll try to um, push them so they're straight so that they're not so in an angle although I don't know if that angle would matter or hurt anything probably not I wonder if I can, well the first thing I need to do is cut that weld off. I'm going to go ahead and cut them off first and then I'll be back. Playing while I'm waiting for my wax pot to get up to temperature. We're at 67 Celsius. I need to get to about 90. So, got a little ways to go yet. I'll be back when it's up to camp. Okie doke. we put the coil in the little glass and it's bubbling away. And take, put the lid on. I might have to go down on the floor and push because Got to push pretty hard to get it to seal up against that rubber uh, coating that I got on there. Yeah. My homemade reverse air pump. I took and flipped the pump, uh, the little plunger upside down on the end of it so that it sucks air instead of pumps air. All right. Let's see if I can push down on this while I pump it. You know. So, I'll have to end up going on the floor to do it. Yeah, let's back up here. See if we can get a shot of the floor. Down here. I'm just going to try to get, me, get, get it in the shot, but no guarantees. That rubber seal that I've got just doesn't uh, seal real well. So I set that down just under my foot. Push down in the middle of it. Okay, we're at we're at uh, 15 on the dial. On the, on the gauge. I don't know if you can see in there, but the coil is bubbling. All the air bubbles coming out of it. On the vacuum. about 20 it's sitting at 20 right now Take a look and see if you're in the shot it's in the shot okay. and it's slowly leaking down it's leaked down to in between 15 and 20 right now and we'll give her another shot here and it starts bulking again. We can do that a couple times, two or three times. I 
Alright, we're down to 15 again. Do that a few times until I don't see a lot of bubbles on the coming out of the coil. A few bubbles yet, but not much. I'm getting pooped. Oop, I need to buy myself a regular vacuum pump <laughs> if I'm going to continue this. Okay, that's it. That's enough for me. Oh, and then we'll set it back up on the bench. Let her leak down. Or leak up. <laughs> Whichever way you want to look at it. At 15 right now. It gets down to probably about 10 and, and let's go. Winded from pumping. And at the vacuum like that, it's boiling off the water or moisture in the coil. And gets rid of that moisture. And then under vacuum is the atmospheric pressure is going to push, actually push wax into the voids where the air bubbles came out. Should be letting go here any second. I, th I thought it was right around 10 that the seal let it go. I don't know if it's my seal leaking or if it's my homemade uh, check valve. Could be either one. Yep, there, let go. My gauge is not. No, it didn't. <laughs> it did not let go. I was going to say, my gauge is screwy if it let go because it's still. Maybe it was five pounds. Five. Is that five pounds or bar? Yeah, I think it's pressure per square inch. And there it goes wide open. Poof, there. Okay. So I'm going to take that shot glass or that glass out of there. But I ain't going to do it with my fingers. Take this. Put that out. Set that down on the bench. Let it cool. When it starts to get uh, cloudy, when the temperature has comes down and the wax starts to get cloudy, and then I take it out. So, so we'll let it sit and cool. Okay, I took the coil that we just had in the pot and uh, pushed it into the. C canister, the C battery sleeve. Uh, I had another C battery laying here to compare it to. And I don't know what I've done with it. I got the bigger ones. 
Oh, believe me, it's a sea size anyway. That's what it is. And we'll have to make the top for it yet. And then wire these and then uh, wire this to the center of the of the coil. This is still pretty warm. Uh, looking, I'm still looking, I'm still looking for that C battery. <laughs> hmm. Not sure where I put it. Here's the my little wax container that I use. Huh. The mystery where it went. Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's an Energizer C battery case. That's so, and I don't know what motor I'll use it on, or if I'll just use it for a display, but, but there it is. Um, I made one once before. I think I've got that in one of the motors already. Um, I think I've got it in, 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 in use. Yep. Yep, that one's in use. But I have some bigger ones that are, these, these are uh, slightly bigger. And I believe this might be the second coil that I wound. First one is the one that I put into uh, a trembler coil. The second one I made a box. So this is actually the third coil. No, no, no. The first coil went into that box. Second one went into the trembler. This is the third coil. Then I made this. This was supposed to be into this canister, but it didn't quite make it. I put too much wax on the layers. And then the next coil, I did make it, and that's being used. That's on uh, one of my motors. So I think I've wound about close to a dozen coils now. <laughs> I don't have enough motors. I need to make more motors now to put them in use. Uh, and my next motor that I want to make is a steam engine, not a, uh, a internal combustion engine. So, But they'll eventually get used for something, I'm sure. So, but I'll, I'll come back when I, I'm going to turn up a, a top that'll fit on here and uh, when I come back and solder the wires to the I'll have to make little pegs and and stuff for it but when I get back to it I'll and the other one that I did this one was the mate to this one these are the two that I done here and this one here is going to go into another trembler coil or a Model T style coil. I'm going to make another one of those with that. So for now I am going to set it back up on the shelf and uh, in some other time turn up a couple more. I've got some uh, Bobbins already ready to go, so all I need to do is just wind the wire. And uh, I don't think I've even hardly touched the spool yet. <laughs> Got lots of coils in that spool yet to wind. So, so I'll be back. I'll be back when I'm working on the top for this coil. So, catch you later.